Hey guys, thanks for joining us this evening. Today I've got Alan, and uh, we're gonna talk about some heady shit. Um, and I don't see any reason to waste any time, let's just fucking get into it. Uh, so, <clears throat> something I've been thinking about a lot is my Pantheon. Um, um, I, I came from a like, Christian background, and I've had to sort of, in my adult life, construct what it is I worship and put some thought into that. Um, so, um, I know that's a subject that uh, you know quite a bit about. So, I want to ask you, uh, what, what do you hold as, um, like, your ideal? What do you worship? Um, I will find things through my journey. I stay active on my seek, and I think uh, I found everywhere, even uh, with Gospels and growing up, uh, the funny tales that you'll get from the Bible where Emma seems like a salesman of a, uh, <laughs> of a messenger comes and like, my God can give you better service than their God. It's like switching to at t or some shit. Uh, it's essentially uh, what happened in those scripts. And um, I believe there's something to that, uh, much more than we take uh, into account. Um, there's a lot of ascended masters who have passed away in uh, times before us. And uh, the majority of the spirits that we come across, they are ascended masters. And um, there is... Uh, more humanity to them than you would think, hmm. uh, even though they're ascended. So it's a matter of uh, who's actually serving your purpose and uh, what is really working for your path. Yeah, I think that's very true. Um, so, so what it sounds like you're saying is there are a lot of the spirits you come in contact with are ascended people who died and became ghosts of some, some nature. Um, and they, so you're actually talking to- well, I'd say better than a ghost. I'd say better than a ghost, but um, they uh, have transcended the flesh. I'll say that much. And, okay. And uh, I got you. So this material realm is not like that. You can pop in through the peepholes. I consider people to be peepholes for the. Uh, the divine. So we are peepholes into this reality. If they need a peephole, they will find a peephole and they will uh, find a way to experience everything through a peephole. Yeah, it's, yeah. And so we're now we're getting into channeling and um, what you allow into yourself. Um, so I think um, there's an Alex Gray painting I really like where it's, he's like, he's sitting at a canvas this this uh, character is sitting at a canvas and he's drawing, and through the back of his head, you can see this entity like projecting its um, will through the back of his head. And so, like what he 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 himself is an instrument, you know, like he he is a tool for something else. Um, and I think that's absolutely true. Um, every artist is a channeler. Any any real artist, any any true art is um it's not himself uh i was talking uh, about a, a picture that uh, i took in where the uh, entity behind me was basically mimicking the gestures and facial uh posture that i had and for me the message was is that we channel what we identify with it identified with me at that moment so it was sort of mimicking <laughs> me Okay. And uh, there's a lot that identifies with us because we are more than us. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah, it's like, it's sort of like you call out to that and that calls out to you and it's sort of both. Right. It's, a, it's a handshake between the two things. Yeah, it's like if you're both uh, fans of Iron Maiden and you're like, hey, Maiden, you know, you identify with something similar to the, uh, that ascended master or spirit. So uh, if you can identify enough, it wants to work with you. Okay. Um, do, you think, do you think all spirits are ascended masters? Um, to a uh, degree, yes. Uh, the elder gods seem to have uh, 
spawned into existence from uh, this code into the beginning, but uh, everyone from the point of the Elder Gods forward, uh, yes. Okay, gotcha. I've, um, I, have you ever heard of an egregore or like a servitor? Sort of a, I believe it, it might be exclusively a chaos magic concept. Um, uh, if you could explain the entity, you might know it by a different name. Yeah, um, basically it's the concept that um, you can, um, it, it's something I think people have been doing for thousands of years, but it's the idea that we create our gods, that we, we ourselves um, are the makers, and we, when we make an imaginary friend that takes on a life of its own at a certain point. And that can be a collaborative effort, like me and you can agree on, on this thing we want to make, and then just start worshiping it. And at a certain point, it stops being imaginary. It's now, it's now real. Um, and to, a to a degree, uh, I, I understand that. Uh, to the degree that I understand it is the, uh, the atoms that are within us, uh, I associate with the atom Ra. So uh, that thing in the beginning that took the atoms and breathed the light into it, essentially, or however the Egyptians want to say he uh, squirted it into existence, however. Mm -hmm. But anywho, there's, there's atoms, uh, we have that within us, that, that code, that original atom code. And that atom code, when we are enlightened enough and we are uh, channeled enough, yes, we can uh, sort of, uh, I guess, help bring something into more clarity. Mm -hmm. So I, I think the elements are, are always there, sort of like your different colors when you pick up to go painting. The, the painting's not there yet, but all the colors are there yet. You okay. bring something into fruition by uh, just with the elements that exist there. So all the elements there, all the things that could be are there, but until you bring it into some kind of creative focus, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it, it's like a tree that falls in the woods, essentially. Okay, I gotcha. So it's all everything, every potential possibility exists out in the universe, but you have to reach out and manifest it into this world for it to mean anything to us. To, um, okay. To um, yeah, I, I mean, it's just like, you know, whatever art medium, uh, and I do think it's mystical arts uh, that everyone engages in. Mm -hmm. It's a form of uh, art, and it's the arts of the creator. Yeah. I, yeah, I think there's a lot of truth to that. And that gets into uh, ritual as well. Like, um, ritual can be that art. It can be that bridge. Um, you know, just this, anything, anything, as long as you put that intention into it. And I think that's stronger when it comes to art. Um, but art is an extended sort of elaborate ritual, if you will, or the result of a ritual, you could say, like making the thing itself could be the ritual, and then the art is the product. Passion into fruition. Yeah. So, um, is, a, is a way I would see actual art that. Yeah. So, um, you were just telling me about a picture, and I didn't get to hear that. Um, something, a picture you'd made? Uh, if we're, are we going back to uh, saying, I do mystical photography and I'll wait for uh, basically the impulse of when I'm supposed to fire or, or uh, take the shot and or look at interesting light patterns and find stuff in it. One of the times I found a entity that was sort of mimicking the same pitch, uh, same uh, head gesture and finger gesture I was and I was saying that was uh, its way in my opinion of communicating that it talks to what it identifies with and oh. we talk to what we identify with. Okay, gotcha. Um, yeah, I missed part of that earlier. Um, okay, cool. Well, that's, yeah, I think that's, um, that's, that's what art is. Yeah, is just <laughs> taking those similar traits that exist in the universe and um, resonating with them and bringing them into reality. Um, do you have, 
I mean, like, every, I feel like everyone does, but what, do you have any thoughts about what happens when we die? Do you, I mean, you already mentioned the Ascended Masters thing, but what happens to people who don't, don't become an Ascended Master? Ooh, that is good. Let me actually, literally, that feels like something I want to bring into the light because I'm not going to be in the dark when I talk about that. <laughs> um, so, anyway, let me, let me get into the light for that. So, um, here recently, I uh, took in some um, cue from the Phoenicians, and there's reasons for that. Uh, did some past life regression stuff. And uh, I do believe it rang very true about the uh, getting to the other side and needing to admit uh, your shortcomings and also to tap into uh, the universal conscious. And if uh, you didn't feel guilty for something, but somebody else felt grieved by you, you get to tap that consciousness. So essentially, you get, uh, there is Amit and he's a gator looking uh algorithm of different animals gator creature and um he wants you to admit your faults the catholics bit that idea with confession and admittance uh to keep you from needing to do it in the the next plane but uh if you can admit to your wrongdoings and your shortcomings and uh you might be granted a chance to go around again orbit around again on the planet oh but that's not a and given then, uh, you're saying if you don't meet that you don't meet that you just die like an actual death huh like no it's, it's better than that it's juicier than that from what i understand uh hathar are the uh the furnace of earth the uh the inner uh lake of fire the inner sun uh she needs fuel you know <laughs> oh shit and, uh, uh, so uh, they get to uh, be fuel and get take down to the base element of soul and uh, strip down to the the base necessity of the sacred fire and repurposed. You know, repurposed. Their energy is repurposed if they uh, if they're not even good enough to learn from a life. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So you get sacrificed to the giant volcano. <laughs> That's, Esse essentially yeah the the, vo the volcanic woman the the great volcanic woman and the, if, a, a lot of that rings true to me yeah if all of that's if all of that is is true and that's that's what's going on and people knew that there'd be no reason for um like anger among people because everyone's going to get exactly what's coming to them it's like uh, essentially unity conscious is like a thing and when people trip they they start to understand mm -hmm. so if you're a psychopath and you don't have you know you don't feel bad for the bad things you do oh well because that's not going to make your heart light on the scales because you're going to get to feel what those people felt that you did wrong you'll get their perspective and mm -hmm. you'll get to feel it like it's yours so it, oh well so <laughs> and so like in a way, though, like, I don't know, maybe I'm looking at it just differently, but like that people are the uh, results of variables around them. Like, um, I, I, I believe that I am the result of my upbringing and um, all the different things around me, you know, my parents' genetics. And I don't, I don't know. Um, so what I guess what I'm saying is if someone does something very heinous and awful, it's usually because, or maybe all the time, because of where they came from, what makes, um, you know, things that have happened to them that make them that way. For example, a lot of, um, you know, kids who are molested by priests as a kid grow up to be priests and molest kids. That's, so, it, it, so there's when we come a, at- There's a matter of choice still. Uh, I, I think it's a, uh, number one, you get the other people's perspective and you get a chance to feel bad about that. And if you don't, well, yeah. I mean, but, if you, it, it is testing, testing the uh, capacity of a soul in the system, as it were. It's not to be perfect. It's to test the capacity of them. 
to at least uh, move up the board. They, they, they get a decent amount of chances, uh, definitely into the, uh, that they get a lot of chances. As many people as there is on earth, you would suppose a lot have been recycled. Um, okay. Of course, there's always those people like, they seem like a new soul. Well, they probably burned <laughs> a bit before coming back. I so got you. Down to the base element. They're, they're repurposed energy. Yeah, they're new soul, sort of. Um, but uh, as far as people being a product of their situation, I always believe there's choice. And uh, that is my understanding. Uh, there's lots of people who have been abused and didn't accept the... Uh, the energies that came with it to repurpose it against others. So, um, so I, I think, um, but what, what makes them decide to be different, you know, is also so things led. Okay. For example, if you were mistreated as a kid and then you decide you're going to, you know, you're going to destroy anything that treats children badly. That's still the result of what happened to you. You just had a different reaction to it. Um, so, it's like, even if you, if you decide to break that cycle, you decided to do that because things led you to decide that. It's still, I don't know if that's really up to you at the end of the day. It might be just little influences you pick up from other people, other objects, other things that, I, I guess what I'm saying is I don't know if there's any true free will or individuality. I don't know if there's, I, I don't know either. I'm not saying that there isn't. I think it depends on the functioning capacity of a individual and that's what they're here to be mm. sorted out for is their functioning capacity. So if they have the functioning capacity to uh, get a better outcome, but some of it is the things that they identify with. So do they identify with the darker aspects that they give into them. There are things that are outside of us. I, I spoke to a, a girl earlier it would seem that there were some shadows that came from beatings as a child that uh, kind of latched on. So she gave into the shadows and they still hang around. Those shadows were sort of beat into her and she accepted the shadows because she turned around and shared the beatings with some fellow siblings. So I think it's a matter as if you give into the whispers or not. Uh, okay. there's, uh, there's going to be uh, what you will pay attention to is where your flow goes. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I really can't argue with that. I think, I mean, I, I certainly feel as though I'm in control of my actions and that I am, you know, I mean, I'm also an Aries. It's my will above the world's will, my will. Um, so, but what I'm saying is logically, I don't know if that's true or if that's just an illusion. Um, and I mean, like I said, I don't know. Uh, but it's good for thought though. Uh, ultimate goal, the ultimate goal in this, uh, and I'll go back to the thought and some Egyptian thoughts, is not to be automatons. So the person who says, I got programming from this situation, that situation, then I replicated it, um, they have given into being an automaton. Yeah. Uh, your soul is your ability to make new outcomes, new creations of life. And when you do not have the capacity for creating new situations, and just replicate you're an automaton so uh you've essentially given a good chunk of your soul away the soul is the uh, ability to originally create uh outcomes from situations and not to automaton act like automaton and just uh replicate what you've seen okay so um what i was trying to get at earlier um because we all have different sets of variables and circumstances um, it's not really, I don't know if it's fair to, you know, weigh your heart against the scales, you know, your heart against the feather, because we have, no one has the same experience. Like if, if we were all the same person with the same situation, that might be fair, but everyone's, everyone's judged at a different standard. I feel like, cause not everyone has the same experience. You know, if someone goes down a bad path, it might be the result of what happened to them. And, you know, I, I'm with you that they can break that. But if they don't break that and they continue that to be an automaton, um, some people might, you, you could say that, you know, someone who uh, was in that same situation might break the same way. Um, we really can't say, you know what I mean? 
Well, uh, from what I gathered information wise is that it is supposed to be flawed enough to give fuel to the fire because they don't want everyone to pass. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, it, it is a, it's a harsh test and it's not fair. Um, uh, they, 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 they want fuel for the fire, but okay. the, the thing about it is energy uh, is uh, never truly wasted. Like I said, <laughs> that it, they'd be go down to base element and they would seemingly be a new soul, seemingly. Uh, okay. But um, yeah, that the the dark is as important as the light, and as I understand, it yeah, you need some stuff for the fire. You need to keep the furnace going. I got you. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I mean, there's there's this fodder. I got you. Um, yeah. It, it's not necessarily to. We're not talking about things that uh, uh, are always out to play nicey nice. I mean, like there's this weird expectation that the, uh, the the gods are going to be always nice to us. And the, I've never gathered that really mm -hmm. from any sacred texts. Even the angels are playing tricks on man. Um, yeah. So I, I, I gather there's more humanity to them than that. And just as much uh, capacity for malice and screw you. So, okay, I got you. So everyone, even gods are individuals and they are going to do what they want to do do what they need to do actually for the system because I said that the fire needs fodder. The fire needs fuel. So uh, uh, the rat race, as I was saying before we were cut off, is that uh, society said it's a rat race. But what do you feed your pet snake? You feed mm. them rats. You literally make a society where a lot of the options are for them to be a rat. And at the end of it, they're fuel for the fire. We're playing along damn yeah i guess it, that is a flaw on my part where i was expecting it to be fair like it like it would make sense and everyone <laughs> like <laughs> like it works out but uh it, i mean there's nothing really to suggest that no i mean neither in nature it's like saying right. that uh, i mean it is what it is if you get near a cliff fall off you yeah. know shit happens yeah exactly even spiritual sense is what I, I, I gather and you are supposed to be I mean it's to see if you can move up the board I mean it's obvious I, like I said before people get cycled around the board and a lot of fuck-ups get cycled around the board it's a it's a matter if you can be uh, you know of a use further up the board or I where you. you are and if you if you act just like a little you know automaton or another rat you get you know you're good food. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I can get behind that. I can, I can see that as a, that makes sense to me. Um, so we were talking earlier about um, um, a lot for you, you know, like, and well for everyone, but um, you were saying you resonate with different spirits for different tasks. And um, you know, that's sort of a transient thing where you feel, you know, like you're still uh, looking. Which, I mean, that's, that's the correct well, way to look at it, not to arrive at an answer. Well, uh, with recent past life regression stuff, I do feel like, you know, uh, they've finally grabbed me by the throat, as it were, through past life stuff. And if you do some past life regression and learning why you're going around the board again and again, you, you'll find to get a little bit closer to uh, what you're working with uh, eternally. And uh, that in mind, uh, for me, it's been uh, the Phoenician uh, Egyptians, and uh, I had no idea that they did a good amount of colonizing the entire world, and, uh, and or that uh, when I have hailed stuff from uh, Viking stuff, that how much of it was the colonizing Phoenicians and the sea people. Um, in fact, uh, I've broken down Odin, so Odan, so yeah. the O, the the uh, the Osiris of the Danube tribe. Whoa! So Odan is uh, was what it broke down to. I'm like, oh, that makes good sense. So he was the 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 old seer, the wise, victorious, yeah. most powerful, uh, resonating with the power of the 
O Father, the Osiris Father, the Patar. Um, and uh, he was the leader of his tribe enough that he was able to, uh, you know, paraphrase and uh, ascend. I got you. Um, so um, if you don't mind talking about it, if you're not comfortable, we don't have to. But um, who, who have you um, worked with? Who do you resonate with? Uh, at the moment, like I said, is the uh, Phoenician Pantheon, okay. which I'm finding um, have done their homework, as it were, because they have Thoth, and Thoth has emerald green tablets. He's definitely transcended time. There is a lot of uh, proof that that culture has transcended time. Uh, there's things from the elder gods that would come from some of Aleister Crowley's findings mm -hmm. that would tie themselves off to the Phoenician pantheon, showing a uh, transcendency of time. Um, there are articles of the, uh, the lost manuscripts, well, they've been found of the, the Bible, uh, that would connect to things from that pantheon as well. And uh, the Mason Bible, as I understand, has the majority of the information in it. So they definitely, the Phoenicians transcended time. Thoth uh, did some very deep magic for them. And uh, I don't see any culture that has resonated across the board as much as they have. I gotcha. Um... I was, I'm in this, uh, well, I was, I got kicked out, <laughs> but I was in this um, Goetic study group on Facebook, yeah. and um, this guy, <laughs> this guy um, made a post in there. He's like, I just had a dream uh, where I was bitten by a frog. Can anyone explain this to me? A frog. And I, <laughs> I didn't even say anything. I just responded with a picture, and it was a picture of an ancient statue of Keck. Yeah. Um, which Keck is kind of a meme, like, uh, not only really people take that seriously. So There's I more to him. There's yes. more to him. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, the, uh, to begin with, the, uh, the founders of, um, you know, beginning existence, they are uh, those who can live in more than one world. So we're talking yeah. mm -hmm. frogs, we're talking uh, gators, things that can be yes. in the water and above the water uh they're the more adaptable creatures you're um that's what i was gonna say i'm glad you brought that up octopi um in fact uh the revelations i have got was that uh definitely the uh the the original waters the the inky waters of original existence that uh that mother entity uh is very close to being an octopus in a lot of ways wow there's um so, reality was written with her ink damn there's and a father I, yeah Patar, think of patar or father as being a pen and her ink being what he used to write existence i've got a friend who um takes a literal interpretation on the bible and he thinks that yahweh the you know, the Christian father, there's actually, there was um, like a male and a female figure and that he killed the female figure. And that's what we refer to as the Holy Spirit or nature. And so he's like the father overlooking. And then the mother, you know, she feeds us, she nurtures us. That's nature. Um, so father being spirit, nature being uh, mother. And anyway, I just thought it's a neat idea. Um, but well, go my back. understanding though, is that, uh, all those original organisms uh, closer to what you would say a uh, they, they're both fa their father and mother they can uh, create on their own with the elements that are there yeah so they're uh, they're very gender fluid uh, sort of like uh, let's say the seahorse is able to carry a baby um, I think they're a little bit of both. And uh, one discovery this week was the uh, uh, mother guy, yeah, 
Mother's a guy. Yeah. <laughs> the planet Mother Guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a guy and a mother. Yeah, it's a mother oh. guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Language is so funny, man. Because <laughs> of stuff like that. Yeah, uh, but the, the matter can is neither. I mean, it's actually both matter is both feminine and masculine. The the higher arcane is one that balances both. Mm. Okay. So they're gender fluid. The the uh, the higher life forms. I gotcha. Um. Uh oh oh! I shared that Keck picture in that group, and. The statue, the statue of Keck, I'll send you a picture of it. Um, mm -hmm. Underneath it, in hieroglyphs, you can see a guy sitting at a computer, and then there's yep. something something happening behind the computer. And then the picture was, it's um, it's that statue, and then next to it, you see Pepe. And um, I shared that, knowing it was going to ruffle some feathers. Yeah. But the well, guy, go ahead. That's my argument, that, that that culture, the Egyptian culture, and their pantheon definitely transcended time. Yeah, there's things that have happened, and uh, and as I go in my my journey, like uh, uh, I'll try to look to things older, and the spirits that I know speak to me. Like you can look older if you want, but actually they got out of touch for a while, because we went back to source. We actually tell the story more clear than they do because they got out of touch a little bit. So they might seem like they're older, but it's not true because we've transcended time. And with the things like Keck, they've proven that they transcended time. I got you. It's, I mean, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of prophecy in religious text also, you know? Yeah, that, that, that is the, the transcendency of time. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I believe Horus, a Horus is hours, like the hours of the day. And that is everything uh, surrounds the good point of the horus or the hours, the good point. Everything is a reflection in time off of the good sun. Hmm. That's neat. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, you're, you're teaching me a lot about language today. I'm learning about words. <laughs> Well, I think the, the, the base root of things is that it's supposed to really resonate with your reality. When you do, then you'll find where the spirits sit in your every day. And that's how we mostly pay homage is what works in the spirit of our existence. The things that we have to hail regardless, like the hours of the day. Yeah. What do you, um, sorry, this is a rough segue, but uh, what, what do you think happens i mean or not happens uh what do you think where where do you think our origin is physically because i we've discussed where souls come from and what happens when you die um but then there's then there's ideas about what makes a human being um like the physical portion um some people turn to evolution some people have other ideas um i was wondering if you have any thoughts about that uh again we'll go from uh personal experience uh through my visions, uh, you know, I definitely use trippy stuff to help. But yeah. sometimes they, they just come from dreams. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when uh, I met uh, what I would call an Aeon was from a natural DMT pump. I, I didn't take uh, anything that would get me to a DMT level, a mm -hmm. uh, trippy level, but uh, through meditation and them just wanting to talk, I got out in the stars, man. And uh, I met what would be called an aeon, and uh, uh, or an eon, because they live in eon. And as they uh, live, they live through the dream of the existence. They dreamed into existence. They are one of the star potentials of uh, Mother Star Sea. So the star sea, the sea which is the the stars hang in the webbing of the universe. So they are one of the stars. Uh, they are Aeon and they live in the dream of the existence that their sun broadcasts to. Hmm. Um, so I've met one of the Aeons and uh, we are all elements of that Aeon's idealistic uh, dream reality. 
Okay. I got you. So, um, it's vision, I, it's point it's yeah. Okay. So is that, that's, that, in, uh, is that exclusively this realm is the dream? Uh, it's each one that uh, a sun broadcasts a point, a, uh, a clarity, like, you know, a light is being shined onto something and the light being shined on is the divine dream of the aeon into the realm that its light can shine. So okay. each, each sun has a potential of broadcasting a aeon's dream. Okay. That sounds like uh, Final Fantasy X. That sounds like they derived from a similar idea. Well, it's, it's going, it's no, but it's going to identify with other things because yeah. a lot of truths end up in art. Right, right. I mean, through channeling. I mean, through what we're just talking about. Yeah. Art is channeling. Yeah, absolutely. Because we're, like you said, we're all windows. We're all peepholes. Peepholes. Into, yeah. Yeah. That's why you see different, you see the same idea in different locations throughout the world with tribes that aren't connected to each other at all. Like astrology, for example. Like how many tri ancient tribes studied astrology that were on the opposite end of the fucking earth from each other, you know? Mm -hmm. But there, there is an ancient internet, as it were, the mother matrix. Mm -hmm. It was different, it's a different technology. It's a spiritual technology. We're used to these technologies. There was spiritual technologies before this and that's, how you would get your message to someone on the other side of the globe is mm. through the mother matrix and meditation and the uh, spiritual electrician uh, electricity flow of uh, the mother box of reality. Uh, that's the, uh, the golden ratio fits in. Mm. Say so it's a mother's box or matter's box and it's father's voice that echoes through the box. Hmm. That's the golden ratio. Is, okay. uh, that's like um, what happened. <laughs> that's as above, so below. What happens on a small scale happens on a large scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's well, what. Go ahead. Yeah, that, that, that's why the universe looks sort of like atoms and you look mm -hmm. at it enough. And uh, yeah, we have the pattern of. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's a it's a lot. Like I, I I tend to go to the far, 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 uh, distant universe of existence when I speak of things, and for me, that's just a, the the best way to really digest reality is to, you know, fill your plate full of it, you know, and yeah. have that all you can eat. I get to I get like um when I trip, and I've had this experience on mushrooms, acid, DMT. Um, I get to a point where I sort of have this intuition and I realize that I, um, I, I am the originator and then I divided myself into every living thing in order to experience uh, a smaller scale um, where it's like, you know, if you're everything, you can't experience new things because you're everything. So you, you limit your um, stimulus. And I think, and um, this isn't based on any kind of logic, just visions or um, just epiphanies. Um, but I think we're all the same individual through different lenses. Um, yeah, and that's why I said you don't get to go to the scale and not get to mm -hmm. be part of the unity and see how you screwed with everyone else and get your perspective because it's also you. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah <laughs> it's one of those um like uh, yeah oh go ahead no i i i think the only thing would be like i keep on uh being uh prompted that it's really important to mention the characters and that's admit and uh if you're getting admittance or if you're admitting things are uh, you're getting omitted from your misdeeds. Um, very important character. Uh, he uh, resonates with the, the foot, footstool of Hathar, which is the, uh, the goddess of the hearth, but we're talking about the earth's hearth. 
and that is the same kind of entity that would be at the other end of the scale as above so below so we're talking about the uh, cherubim at the footstool of god who are at the other side of the gates as it were so there's uh these nice shamira looking uh creatures uh, uh are like little doggos fierce doggos at all the gateways i got gotcha. you and they they um they're, <laughs> that's a judgment. That's the decision of who is allowed to pass and who isn't because not everyone should be allowed. Mm-hmm. It, does that sound? And some people just need to be food. <laughs> some people just look tasty. <laughs> <laughs> you are a tasty uh, fuck up. I love Get the way the fire. you... Game, I love, game. Yeah. I love the way you characterize it as <laughs> kind of brutal because it's... I mean, there's nothing to suppose that that it wouldn't that that it wouldn't be that. Like, if we're right. t- especially if we're talking about the as above, so below shit. It's like, if you look at nature, it's fucking raw. It's super. Yeah, why wouldn't raw. it be? Why yeah. wouldn't it be? Why wouldn't it be like you got into the wrong part of the Nile? You're in denial. You're going in the fire, buddy. You 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 you're snack. You're you're yummy looking for the gator. Oh, you're just looking too delicious. <laughs> you got away with words, man. You make me think Thank about you. things. Um, is that is that an eye of Horus on the back of your hand? Uh, yes, uh, it's been very important to uh, to uh, bring in uh, Horus. Uh, many people have seen that the spirit of uh, Loki has been with me, and um, some people see that as set. And I understand that. Uh, that is half of the equation. You need mm-hmm. Horus as well. There mm-hmm. is justice and injustice. Both of them come with a storm and they get yeah. shit done, but you need one with the other to balance. So uh, yeah, yeah I, I've been uh, proudly wearing the Horus uh, on the in hand. That way uh, I am asking for the balance because Loki rides me anyway. You know, rides yeah. me anyway. You don't need that. You don't need uh, to <laughs> bring that part of you with yeah, you. I don't really have to ask for that. Like, I got you. I like I like practical tattoos like that. Like tattoos with application. I don't. I hate. I hate just like generic tribal tattoos or video game tattoos. It's like what the fuck, man. Well, I freshen this all the time. That is just that is written on me. That way, I have to constantly refresh it. And I yeah. think that's important about uh, anything that's talisman related that you're refreshing it so uh that would be the bad side of a a tattoo even though that is a blood ritual if you really want to get it in you yeah blood ritual it in you uh (laughs) i do agree with that but even those they get faded so it uh you know things can be dishonorable eventually so you you have to keep whatever you got sacred fresh that's that's a good fucking point. I, I I have a palm tattoo. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's it's fucking faded. Like yeah, you might want to yeah call that uh, a, a a contract that needs to be updated. Yeah, uh, yeah, that makes sense. I've been I've actually just intuitively been like knew I needed to get it done anyway, like to refresh it. That's something that's been in the back of my head, and I, now I really feel like I need to do it. Yeah, you do, uh, yeah. but. For uh, chaotic uh, things and keeping it uh, good, uh, Set originally was a just the god of the storm. Is but when the storm gets out of hand, it starts taking out more than the stuff that just needs to go, mm-hmm. and that's when the uh, archetype of Horus came in to put his brother into uh, you know balance. And uh, I've been thinking lately as things go and. Uh, uh, that I am the eye of the storm. You want to be the center. The You want the storm to flow around you, not mm-hmm. to be controlled by the storm, but you're the center of the storm. You're the eye of the storm. And anytime things are going wrong or seem hectic, you want to be in the calm of the storm. You want the storm to flow around you, mm-hmm. not be caught by the storm. Yeah, be the cause, not the not get wrapped up in the effect of it. Yeah, that that is uh, the hermetic way to look at it. Yeah, um, there. Uh, that's you know that's that's a concept we see a lot in art also. Like um, the cool guy driving away from an explosion. It's like he's totally. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, be the calm. Be the calm in the situation. Be the yeah. 
you know, things are, that's the best way to survive situations as well. I mean, the what will kill you is the panic. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Um, it, yeah. And, um, how, and when it gets back to, um, like judgment and what, what happens after we die, it's like how you handle those situations matters. What you do in those trying situations. I mean, that, that is a test. The whole thing's a test. And I agree with that completely. Yeah. And it's, uh, I'll go to that. Yeah. I'll ring it back in. Cause you put it that way. That seems like it's not fair. Who said it was supposed to be a hundred percent fair. <laughs> I yeah you know what I mean yeah, yeah. Who, who said that part I I never saw anywhere where life was exactly fair it was just what you put into it is what you got back or was that horrible Batman line from the movie is it his parents taught him that he's got to make sense of the world if he wants wants any sense in the world he's got to make sense of it and it's not going to make sense for him yeah he's got to make it make sense painting is not going to paint itself for you you gotta pick up your brush um, yeah yeah that's like um like art for me is very therapeutic it's how i get uh it's how i exercise those things out of me because that stuff will find a uh, for me personally that stuff will find an outlet so i try to mm -hmm. direct it direct it in a uh, productive outlet so even if no one pay, was paying attention to what I did, I, I mean, I'd still do it, you know? It's a very personal And I do thing. think, yeah, in my opinion, that's one of the highest sacraments because creation is the highest God, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Adam Ra, I'll just call it that because that's what it makes sense to me. But the uh, best way to honor creation and chaotic creation is uh, – with art that just comes out again and speaks at you from a flow and going yeah. with the passionate flow of creation is yeah that would honor the creation God. that's a, that's a pretty high sacrament if you ask me and something i've tried to explain to people is it's not always fun for me it's obligatory i feel like i must make it's not even right. entertaining for me sometimes it's painful but i have to do that like mm -hmm. I don't, I can't, I can't shut that off. Um, yeah, I'm sure you can relate to that. Um, well, there's a, there's a lot of growth when you get to the pain. It's like a workout, spiritual workout. You don't yeah. want it to be easy. You're not going to have your muscle grow. So uh, one of the yeah. things I've enjoyed here lately is uh, I'll get on a karaoke stage and I'll pick a song that causes me PTSD. And I will ride that storm on stage. And it is difficult, but it's juicy. It's got that's, passion. You can taste it. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 very good, man. That's cool that you, you find a way to get exercise that as well. Um, at the beginning, we were talking about, I, I mentioned I've been really thinking a lot about my Pantheon. And... Um, I, I mean, I, I think um, my life is... Oh, this is where I interrupt you like a rude asshole. No, go ahead, man. Very low key by... Hey, I invite uh, you on because I wanted to hear hot. you talk. Yeah. And here goes the low key aspect is it is Hathor's day, not Thor's day. It is Hathor's day. Hmm. <laughs> I just want to say that it, it's more important that it's Hathor's day than it is Thor's day. Okay. But he forgot. <laughs> <laughs> um sorry. oh pantheons um i i my, my god i've been thinking about what what i worship and um i i um i i treat gods like um concepts like for example i don't i don't believe in a literal truth of the bible mm. i believe in the the poetry of the bible the parables within it um but that doesn't make it any less real to me um, Satan is included in my That's pantheon. That's why I've been, yeah. yeah. Sa Satan's That's a huge been allegory. That's why I've been going yeah. by allegory is because no matter what allegory is a voice of the gods. Mm -hmm. So if somebody were to say allegory is not, that's a lie. <laughs> and I can absolutely say I'm a voice of the gods under the term of allegory. There's no removal there. That's yeah. just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, 
but yes, uh, Satan is a huge part of my pantheon because he is the light bringer. He shows man light, which um, the other, that, that story, I mean, we, you can see that with um, another great example of that same archetype is Prometheus. The gods don't want to enlighten people, but Prometheus gives man fire. Wow because um, he well, believes I, I, I think, in their I think that, that name has become, that name has sort of become a, a bit of a dirty word, as it were. Like, it's like, a, you know, I could use some racist terms uh, to describe some people. I don't think they'd appreciate that. They'd rather me go off a heritage name that they were proud of. And I think uh, it would be better to call that same character from my experience personally would be the earth key the ea key so ea uh or enki okay uh, enki he's a, yeah i well he's i, I in, he's a in key a inner sea key for inner wisdom for inner earth he's a he's an n in key in and ea uh is another way to see him and he is uh the inner light the inner key the inner knowing the inner see uh the end key you're blowing my fucking mind with names like that's <laughs> i never thought of it like that um but yeah when you said and, Enki, and D dc made him the green lantern i hope you know dc made him the fucking green lantern it's hilarious the 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 earth key the inner light the green light that's a fucking Green Lantern, dude. Damn. <laughs> so much symbolism, even in the art that you wouldn't think has lots of symbol in, some in it. Like, really. <laughs> Hell, like what I said, um, uh, uh, Mother Guy, yeah. Uh, so Guy Gardner. Guy Garden. Mm. He's Mother Gaia. <laughs> so Guy Gardner, the inner light. Yeah. Dude, I, I love how artists, whether they know it or not, it feels for me that a lot of DC stuff has it written in there. Essentially, Batman, he is Anubis. Hmm. He looks more like a dog, too, because his hmm. ears. If you look at him and his pet dog, he's a bat or he's a what? Nah, he's supposed to model Anubis. And Catwoman is supposed to model Bassett because they were lovers. Holy shit. <laughs> well, I mean, damn. Fuck. All these connections, man. Yeah. If you look for it, it's all there. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, because those are the elements of reality. You pick up them colors, you start painting. Whether you know it or not, you're going to start uh, making those combinations. Yeah. It's almost like it's the same principle as there's no such thing as an original concept. It's more like you take pieces of each other concept and put them in a unique way a new like, algorithm yeah yeah it's like all the things already exist and they're there it's how you put them together and like illustrate it um yeah for me um, the worst sin is being a automaton and uh, not being aware of the things and not trying to be that's um that's very uh that reminds me of thelema like getting into crowley uh do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law which the book of the law was um he was channeling horace when he wrote that so comes full circle <laughs> but they also wanted food for mommy so it's like that do what you want because my mommy's hungry yeah i like feeding her bass i liked feeding her bastards in the fire so yeah <laughs> do what you want mommy needs food hey if that's where you end up good for mommy yeah <laughs> Well, we've been going for like hour and a half ish. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about before we wrap this up? Uh, I could leave the note on. I want everyone to remember that Thursdays belongs to Hathor, and Thor can just give it up. <laughs> uh, that's why I'm Mommy's favorite. Yeah. If uh, if you guys take anything away from this, remember that. <laughs> Well, Alan, thanks for joining <laughs> us, man. Um, it was fun talking to you. My pleasure. All right. Enjoy the rest of your hot Thursday. Yeah, as well. You as well, man. Take it easy. And you guys have a good night, too. We'll catch you next week. Bye.